Hi, I'm Darren. Hi, I'm Gordon. And we're the Two Gay Reefers. Hey Reefers, welcome to our new YouTube room. Yay! Yay! Much better lighting. Uh, today is Darren's birthday. So happy birthday to Darren. Mm. Should we sing happy birthday to him? No. Uh, <laughs> everyone out there sing happy birthday to uh, to Darren. Make sure you leave a comment below saying happy birthday to Darren. Uh, oh. When this video comes out on Sunday, it was uh, on Thursday. So it's not that far, not, not that long ago. So leave, leave a happy birthday comment below, please. You'd really, really like it. Aww. Aww. So we've got really good lighting for my birthday. We got a ring light in front of us. So you'll probably see little rings in our eyes if you look close enough. Yep. And two side lights. Yep. So we're not in darkness anymore, even though, even though it's dark outside. And even the room's dark. And YouTube cushions. Yay! These are really, really hard to get. Just saying. <laughs> anyway, enough of us. Roll the tape. Here comes a Mega Coral tank update. Awesome. So the right hand side of the tank was looking really, really good. We had it nicely filled in with lots of corals. There's a nice density of corals. The left hand side, however, wasn't. It was looking pretty sparse. Yeah, it was suffering a lot. Uh, it just wasn't, um, just was too low. Too low and that meant the sand sifters could sift sand all over it. So that made a lot of corals unhappy as well. Yeah, I swear these two always give us strange looks. I sit on the couch next to the next to the tank, and I look over, and there's at least one of them is always sort of staring at me sideways, like, "What are you doing?" Yes, <laughs> yeah. I love them to death, but they're really uh, a little creepy sometimes. A lot of people say that you can't or coral scape with sand sifters. This video is to prove that you actually can. Don't blame the fish. Blame your skills. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see. They just left sand snow everywhere. So, and the other thing that didn't help was the platygyra. So the platygyra just had stinging tentacles, and it needed a perimeter. My, my fault. I picked that one. <laughs> yeah, you did. So, we've, we've been through this before in other videos. I pick all the really uh, aggressive corals. A few things we've discovered to help with the whole uh, sand sifting thing is get a bit of height in there. So we found some Xenia that isn't quite like the pulsing Xenia that you get overseas. This one actually has a nice stem to it and has some height. The higher corals sort of catch the sand. Or it just drifts with the flow to the other side of the tank. That's right, that's right. Another thing that's good for height as well is a finger leather. So we got ourselves one of those. I thought this was a bit of a weird looking coral when we first got it, but it's growing on me. It's, it's, uh, I, love the, I love the color of it, uh, especially under the blues. It looks really cool. I find it's more like an Acropora that moves. <laughs> That's why I like it. Is that because you can't grow Acros? Possibly. Possibly? Enough about that. Enough of that? We won't talk about that? <laughs> Alright. <laughs> but yeah, the soft corals in our tank are looking really, really nice and they all sort of blend in from the one side as well. well all we can see in the background of the shot is Itchy diving his head into the anemone. <laughs> <laughs> This shows you actually how big that finger leather has grown. It's actually reaching up to the light quite significantly since we bought it. Now this is a nice pink hammer. So this is an unusual one as it's a, it's more like a tree sort of branching one. It's so like a bonsai. Almost is, yeah. Almost is. Yeah. But it's insane. It's got such nice color. It's got a subtle green center on it and nice pink tentacles. Darren's other hobby is uh, growing and manicuring um, bonsais. Yeah. Although he's been a bit slack since we got the tank because he's got new bonsais to play with. <laughs> underwater ones. Yeah, underwater bonsais, that's it. Yep. But as you can see, this one just provides that height again that, so the sand sifters actually have to go higher. And Bugs loves this one. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he loves posing and in look, front and of And look, there's a sand sifter staring at us again. <laughs> <laughs> Now we've got a little Duncan here. Now this is a bit shaded by that uh, hammer, but hopefully it'll grow out to the side a bit and again, provide a bit more um, height to that side. Now we've got some GSP and Daisy polyps. So we found that these are good for growing in these particular areas because they don't seem to be disturbed by any of the sand at all. It just sort of settles in between 
and the polyps just bloom up around it. So you, they're not affected at all. It just keeps on growing. And it's a nice filler piece. Very nice filler piece. Yeah, it looks good. It's got movement. It's got the, the, the green. Yeah, it's just nice. Now this is possibly my favorite zoa in the whole entire world, a Sunny D's. Since we put the hammer in, they are stretching towards the light a bit more. Pink Hammer also has shelter for the A cans as well, because they don't like as much light. And as you can see, they're very bright at under blues. Now these are eagle-eyed zoas. Now these are one of my new favorites and they're starting to grow like weeds. I've only had them a couple of weeks, so got new polyps on that. Now this is a new dash, so this is two dash we have now. This one was quite interesting in the actual fish shop. It was called a ghetto dash, because it looked a bit ghetto. <laughs> we moved it around the front because it didn't have enough room around the side. Now this was a bit of a mistake. It didn't like it in the ghetto. This is a cheap scully that we nursed back to health. So this was had it like a pizza wedge cut out of it basically. Yep. And it finally was looking really, 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 really nice until it got stung by the dash that we moved to the front. <laughs> and I didn't think it had a hope in hell after this, to be honest. Yeah, it looks pretty terrible there. But I've got the touch. <laughs> How long did that take to get back to health where it is now? About two months. Two months? Yeah. yeah. Yep. As you can see, the dash also suffered as well, so it wasn't a one-sided battle. It lost a lot of colour, and it's a lot slow in recovery, so I've put it in a shaded section now, so it's sort of help it along a bit. Now we've got an ultra-bright new scully. Now I've been wanting an orange scully for ages, finally found one at the right price, and they're, look how fluffy it is. They're very, very expensive here in Australia, so oh. um, that particular piece was really just, just the right price. This trackie is the next beautiful spectacular piece especially under blues it's a huge piece and with the sand it does take a bit of sand it just puffs up and just the sand rolls off now we had everything looking pretty good but then of course having a coral shop so close you just start buying more corals and we had a bit of clutter and the Xenia was getting a bit stung by the pink hammer as well, so... So after rearranging, this was the final result. So as you can see, it's a much... If you go be staring at it again. <laughs> it's a much cleaner sort of outlook. Everything's sort of grouped together. Finally got the clam off the sand as well because he kept falling over or was wedged up against the glass, whatever. So now he's in a nice spot and he looks really happy. He does definitely look happy. He's uh, getting bigger too, I think. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. As you can see, there's a the sand on the trackie, but it inflates a little bit more and it just all rolls off. As you can see, like the hammer's not affected by the sand sifters at all because it's just too high. It's got that extra height and they rarely drop sand on it. Anything that does just sort of falls off in the breeze, in the current, not breeze. Yeah, there's no breeze underwater. <laughs> Another tip is put things on the side of rocks. Don't put it flat on the ground because with the open mouth it'll just fill up the sand. Put it on the side of a rock and then the sand can't get into it. Now I hope this helps with people who have a negative attitude towards sand sifters. They don't have to kill your coral, you just have to take a few precautions. Yeah, they're definitely worth the little bit of extra work you've got to put into, a little bit more extra thought when you put into placing your corals. Uh, but the uh, sand sifting gobies, they're definitely worth having in the tank. They're just, they've got such personalities. No more negative campaign towards gobies. Vote yes to gobies. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> anyway, guys. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think about the gobies. Uh, let us know if you've got sand sifting gobies yourself. That's all for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment below. We really appreciate it. Uh, really, we're striving to get more uh, subscribers as well. Uh, hit that big subscribe button. Hit the bell to be notified of the video that comes out every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. 
Australian Eastern Standard Time. Also people, if you like our stuff, tell other people about it and share our videos. Share it everywhere. Share it on Facebook, share it on, on YouTube, share it to your neighbor, share it to your local fish shop. Anyone you, you know that might be interested in watching the videos, let them know to look up the Two Gave Reefers. Uh, we really want to get to that uh, thousand subscriber mark really quickly. No, we won't mention the stickers yet. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, everyone, keep it salty. See you guys, have a good day. See you later, bye.